Okay. Hello and welcome to the Mystic Chat. Uh, today we have some special special guests who are also uh, podcasters and 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 and, and a magical people. Can we have um, uh, Marshall and Austin from Southern Bramble? Is it Bramble or Bramble? Bramble, right? Um, Bramble. My name is Chris Allen, and um, I'm an author, teacher, priest, um, minister um jack of all trades so um i want to hand it off to my co-host laura gonzalez introduce yourself really quickly hello everybody my name is laura gonzalez i am a published author a teacher a minister a priestess a witch for hire pew, pew, and a teratologist and a dog mom and a friend and one of my very good friends is or other other co-hosts crowder aaron Introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Laura. This is Aaron. I'm a mentor with the Fellowship of the Phoenix, a witch, ceremonial magician, and magician in an armchair. And I'm super excited um, to talk to Marshall and Austin today. I've been listening to you guys since since you started the podcast. So although you have no idea who I am, it's like I feel like I know you guys. So I've been I've been really looking forward to all the cackles tonight. Um, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and uh, start with Austin. Why don't you jump in? Well, thank you um, for inviting us, everybody. And um, I hope that I can, I'm sure I speak for the both of us when I say I hope we both can get to know uh, many of you better, especially now. I feel like um, when when I interact with people online, it's like if if I talk to you, um, well, I always I always try to talk to everybody. Um, as best as I can. It's gotten harder as the Southern Bramble's grown and, and things like that to keep up with all the conversations um, with my shop and everything like that. But uh, yes, if I talk to people enough, eventually I'll start to like remember like, oh, uh, yes, this person. And and sometimes I'm really bad with names too, but I'll remember like um, handle names or even just a little profile picture bubble. And when people change it, I'm like, I don't know who you are. What happened? We were just saying that I was just like, is Austin going to use his actual name or is there a different name? I got, I got really nervous for a second there. So it's so funny you said that. Yes, I um made the decision early on to when I first started. Um what I do online as, as Southern Bramble, um, to you, like attach my, my name to everything. Um, mostly for like lack of confusion. Uh, so people would know, you know, that like they're who I am and, and, you know, a lot of my work is attached to that. I'm a Google search away. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah, it's easy to find me. <laughs> so tell us about, about yourself, about Marshall. Who are you? Who's who's Marshall? Who am I? I'm Marshall. Hi, I'm the Witch of Southern Light. Uh, that's what I go by on on my socials: uh, Instagram, TikTok, and Marshall WSL on Twitter. Um, I also really like to go by my name. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of funny. I've always I should tell me about me before I tell you my name. <laughs> I'm a hairstylist. <laughs> uh, I'm writing a book right now, so I'm not published yet, but I am in the process of writing and I've been working on that for the past almost year. So that's been really, really exciting. Um, I like to, I'm an artist, uh, uh, a creator, a dog. <laughs> I'm also a dog parent. So I've got uh, a love of animals, super, super, super hardcore. So I would much rather be in a room full of loving dogs and cats and animals than most humans. I love it. I love it. So, you know, I've heard your show and the thing I loved about it, it's very queer, uh, but not overly queer. And it's also very witchy and you know, you, you do a lot of teaching and theory and stuff like that. So tell us about your show. Tell us about why you even started the show. Like, what was the purpose? 
Um, Marshall first. reached out to. No, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, you go yeah. first. <laughs> uh, well, it was funny. Was it me reaching out to? I thought it was you reaching out to. But we, we've been. I we've don't been remember chatting. We, we had literally just been chit-chatting instagram friends maybe we did a couple lives on instagram they became kind of good friends and uh i think someone in one of the lives was like y'all should do a podcast and then you messaged me and we were like should we do a podcast and i, I was like we- that sounds really like, yeah. fun i'd like to do that this was around the time that um marshall please remind me of the name <laughs> um britain and and uh yes. jay's podcast had <clears throat> invoking out. witchcraft invoking witchcraft thank you it was around the I, same time yeah it was around the same time and we were we were talking about it and we give a lot of credit to being like oh this is very like you know this is the kind of podcast that we want to see and mm-hmm. and do obviously in our own way but emulate more of and um I think one of us made the jo- like it was a joke. I don't even think we took it seriously at first. It was literally like, "What if we did that?" Oh my yes, god, stop! Yeah, was, you should was. do it. No, you should do it. It was like, "Oh, we should do it," and then it, um, it began. Yeah, it did. And you know, I've been a practitioner. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, on and off for a very long time. I started very, very young, all the way like when I was 12 years old. I, I discovered you know Wicca in the 90s. That was that was the big thing, and. Um, well, I had a drop off of it in my early 20s, it when I came back to it, you know, I was really, really hungry for new material. It had been a little under a decade since I'd really practiced and things had really changed. I mean, what was available had changed. What was out there had changed. The conversation around Wicca, witchcraft, paganism, all of it had mm-hmm. changed. So what I found over the period of the past, um, you know, in my 30s is I want to read more. I want to suck. I want to like really absorb more. And what I found is I keep trying to find, I find pieces of, of the best books out there that I love. Yeah. But ultimately someone said like, if you really want to find the best book for you, you got to write it. And I felt very similarly about podcasts. Cause I love, I listen to tons of podcasts. I love them. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, I want to, I want to make my own. Cause I feel like if I want to, I want to create the thing that I know I'd want to listen to. Mm, that's awesome. Um, you know, the soul from reason I even started the the um, mystic chat was uh, uh 2020 during COVID. There was a whole lot of people who were like, Oh, I feel disconnected. I don't feel like I feel all alone and I'm away from my circles and my communities and my groves and whatever. And so I was just like, hey let's get a few people let's talk about magical things and at first and i was like well let's not take it too seriously and we and, and we're having a great time and then like the whole george uh, floyd thing happened then all of a sudden we re- realized oh we have to have some seriousness if we're, uh, i mean because a zeitgeist is very important to me to like be connected to what's what's happening in the world. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask is like, what is your magical slash witchcraft inspiration? Like what gets you going? What, what drives you um, in witchcraft? Marshall, I'll let you start. Oh, sure. I've been obsessed with the iconography, the not the iconography, the icon of the witch since as long as I can remember. I mean, I I I have always, always, always had an affinity for witches, for witchcraft. And 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 if someone would be like, oh, you're a warlock, no, I'm a witch. Oh, you're a wizard, no, no, I'm a witch. It's <laughs> it's it's very clear that that's what I am. And I don't care if your idea of that is interchangeable. It is not to me. That is my identity. It's what I felt like I knew I must have been tapping into since I was very young before I knew it was a real thing that I could actually tap into. Um, I think probably one of my biggest, my biggest uh, inspiration that I really, really like now is it really comes from a sense of animism. Animism mm-hmm. is a massive part of my practice. Everything has spirit. And once you once you process that thought, 
it really changes the way you look around at your life. It changes the way you think about the energy of your home, the energy of your car, the energy of your backyard where you take your dogs to go to the bathroom every day. It takes your mind out of its of its personal presence when you go and take long walks, when you look at fire. I mean, everything has spirit. I, I made a post a while back that was like, animism is just putting googly eyes on everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's so true and and it 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 really really informs my craft because now i don't think of herbs as ingredients i don't think of stones or metals as as just simple tools they're allies they all have spirit they all carry a very specific virtue identity thought process and it's not human but it's a spirit so that's that's really what drives my craft i think for me um Personally, I wanted to say I really like um, uh, a panel format. Love this. Um, Love this is really fun. <laughs> um, and, and again, thank you all so much for having us. Um, but I think for witchcraft, I have a very similar, and I think this is also going back to the point of like why Marshall and I started the podcast together is that we can, our practices might look different even though we might fall under the same like flavor or savor of witchcraft mm -hmm. um and uh, but it can look very different ultimately and yet at the same time we have really similar backgrounds going up growing up um we grew up in some sort of conservative southern america uh or for me uh, in the midwest both in both um and we have navigated our magical lives since pretty young. I think I started also when I was like 11, 12, um, around that time. And it's been like a really long, strange journey to get from, from then to now, starting a page on Instagram back in 2020, again, going with this, this idea of like, disconnection and looking for for connection when I literally just went on like a mini road trip with some friends and realizing like oh there are people who do share similar opinions to about excuse me magic and witchcraft out there in the world like you're not that special you're not the only one maybe you should reach out to more people um and it wasn't you know just the subjects that were being written about at the time or discussed at the time and then really immersing myself in into um this weird corner of of the internet and also just like the the public sphere and the 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 community sphere in general i think that a lot of my work is focused on folklore mm. um theory uh mythos history um intersect the intersection of like where those things mingle and where it does matter and where it doesn't matter to keep them separate and um yeah it's also it's all very spirit-led it's all very um yeah very interesting i could go on about my practice for for a long time but that feels um I love like it. i'd be taking up a lot of mic space so <laughs> i want I, I want to make sure we actually do get further into both of your both of your crafts uh and because you both are artists um but first one of the things that really impresses me with your podcast is how you do not shy away from being political you do and you are i think um first and foremost foremost activist which is um, when I, like, when I look at Marshall's link tree, it's not only him, it's also, it's also the concerns that he cares about, you know, and, and the foundations that he cares about. Um, I had just moved from the, uh, from the Midwest, but where the, um, where some of the community is kind of like, no, just focus on the positive. You don't want to give attention to the negative to Texas, where honestly, a lot, a lot of the witch community here are just conservatives, like who also like horns. So, um, so I know it, it does take, you know, you, you both being in the South, it takes a lot of courage to be open about your politics and your activism. And I was, 
I don't have, um, I'm sorry, I don't have a strong question about that for you, but I would love to hear more about how you see the intersection between activism and your witchcraft. Absolutely. Um, I think Austin and I both agree that witchcraft, in our opinions, is inherently political. And I was actually, oh my gosh, I was literally listening to a podcast this morning on seeking witchcraft, and it was going over the history of women in witchcraft. And one of the things she asked her is, do you think it's political? And the interview, I, I, I wish I remembered her name right now, but it's off the top of my head. Um, she said, well, yes, but I think a lot of people who don't see that are not looking at the a definition of what political means, because there's who you vote for right? There's who you, who you support in the ballot box, but then there's your life. And in my opinion, everything is political. This computer is political. Light is political. The sun is political. Everything has been politicized in some sort of way. Witchcraft is no different. And, and my practice is informed very much, I should have said animism and folklore, but very much by stories of the past. And a huge portion of why I got into witchcraft is because I personally felt um, like an underdog. Um, I was gay mm. at a very young age. I was weird. Um, I was just very off. I was bullied. And I felt like I had no sense of self-power. And I wanted to reclaim that. So finding that made me realize that's a major inspiration for my craft. And just because I may have feel, I may feel that I have found my sense of power. Listen, I'll be, I mean, you all can see me. I am a, I am a white cis man in America. We all have, I mean, I have a, I have a platform. I have a voice. I want to use it because I believe in um, not being part of a marginalized voice, but lifting all marginalized voices and using my craft to do it at the same time. I think that's really important. And I think that, um, hi, I'm the not white cis or male American <laughs> uh, United States citizen. I am an American, however, I'm from Mexico and that is America, the country. Absolutely. Um, I think that people who say, oh, this and that shouldn't be politicized, this and that shouldn't be uh, uh, speak about politics, uh, you are sitting on your privilege, honey, and it's showing. And when you sit on that privilege, it's very easy to say, oh, that shouldn't be politicized. Everything is, is politicized because uh, when people ask me, you know, like, what, Laura, what do you do to, to bring awareness or to bring activism? And my answer is usually, I exist. <laughs> and, and, and that's enough. So as one person that will be exactly Marshall, like on the other side of the coin, on one side is your face, on the other side is my face. From this side of the coin, what we need on that side of the coin is exactly what you all are doing, which is lifting voices, shedding light. And um, I know I'm not the first person of color who says this, but we need white people to educate white people because people of color are tired of educating white people. A, B is an immense amount of labor that we don't make, get paid. Benmo Blue Witch, by the way. Um, <laughs> And um, we need you to be the ones talking about it because people just blatantly disregard us. So when you combine the act of witchcraft, which is um, resistance mm. to religion and to conformity, and as a white person, I lift in the voices, all I have to say is thank you. Mm. So, so thank, thank you, you so thank you yes thank you so much um have you also, I have really you all gotten your some color. pushback sorry about that. sorry to jump on you have no, you all gotten no. some pushback like in your comments or your dms or anything i don't get it i think as much as marshall does uh, my platform's a lot smaller comparatively to marshall's um i think marshall has br like does a really good job at breaking the you know, even within like the, the occult sphere, there's like subgenres within that. And I think like I kind of stick to a little corner of the internet and Marshall has a, a way of articulating himself and doing a really beautiful job about spreading across several different spheres. So I think there's, 
you know, Marshall's just existing and doing doing your own thing, but then other people see that and it might, you know, shake their worldview or something and then feel the need to say something about it. Whereas I'm more like just tucked away in a little corner. I've I've had a few instances in the past because I, I get very um I'm very opinionated, but I'm also recognizing the fact that I don't know everything and every single person has a different perspective than me. And every person has has the ability, if you have the ability to share a new perspective with me that changes my perspective, and everyone's perspective should have the ability to to inform our perspectives. I think that's one of the biggest things that goes wrong with many people who like to argue, especially online, is they believe <laughs> their viewpoint is the only right one. And I try to listen even to the ones I disagree with, so at least I know what I'm arguing against. Um, and I think that's really important because many times people like to get in online arguments or like to make really very general hard statements and then they want to defend the nuance of it and I'm like hold on I feel like I made a statement that is very nuanced and if you want to have a conversation with me that opens my ideas to new perspectives I'm down I'm going to listen but if you're just going to come at me just to right. yell at me and I right. have blocked many conspiracy theories I've brought uh, theorists I've blocked many people who want to tell me that my neck that I'm bringing negativity and that Oh, specifically was the one that was uh, um, witchcraft isn't p- political. Real witches don't get into politics. Real spiritualists what? aren't political because that's not of the vibration. You know, uh, uh, there's a thing in Austin. Please uh, feel free to ch- for jump in because none of us here are shy. Um, one of the things that annoys me, and just yesterday I wrote this huge thing on Facebook and I said, I'm going to delete my comment. I felt so grown up. I was like, I'm growing. Um, um, one of the things that bothers me, and I have to just let it go. I'm going to take something from Matthew Venus. And I thought he was so eloquent when he said, when people are talk about the spirituality of witchcraft or the religion of witchcraft, or even the hedge, which are the granny witch they're not reclaiming witchcraft they're rebranding it so that comes from Matthew Venus I wanted to give him credit because when he said that I was like finally I have I can articulate what I'm trying to say because witchcraft as you both know if you look through the history and 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 just learn about witchcraft it was a fuck you to the establishment absolutely it was female power queer power uh the people of the earth power and yes and, uh, uh, there are pagan it's just blah 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 but this whole thing about oh you know one of the things i tell people is his whole thing about crystals and witchcraft is a 20th century and or yeah 20th century invention mm-hmm. sorry it's not ancient um, it's a newer thing he, because the you think the witches and in, in England and Britain had oh let me have let me we'll go out and find a, a court so I can do my spell oh uh, you're like I found a dead frog let me do my spell you know <laughs> and you know I will oh go ahead go ahead I'm sorry I just just a little side comment obviously uh, when they say you know we are the granddaughters of the witches you can burn I'm like, no, honey, you probably were the granddaughter of the one doing the burning, A. B, the witches that were burned were not witches. They mm-hmm. were Christian women. And that needs to be, that that needs to stop. I mean, we love to romanticize witchcraft when there's nothing romantic about it. It's, it's resistant, you know. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, Marshall. Thank you. Well, I was just going to say, um, you're absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. Both of you are absolutely right. Uh, I, I very much agree with that statement of the, I keep seeing that. I luckily don't see that meme as much anymore about we are the granddaughters of the witches you couldn't burn. But um, I think it got adopted into cringe, cringe yeah, sphere. It it's cringe like cringy sphere. to say now. It was cringy to say at the beginning, but then I think people are now aware that it's cringe. It, it got it got turned on its head. I do want to say that while yes, many of these things and concepts that we use nowadays in, in modern craft and and uh, aren't ancient, they are twentieth century things. I do want to point out that 
for, for listeners, you know, that's okay. It's okay that it's modernized, right. but just know that most of that actually wasn't part of antiquity. Many of the things in antiquity were done very, very, um, they were dirty. They were, um, you know, they had ammo parts. They were things that were done that, um, that were just kind of, a lot of these things were done in a way because you didn't have access to go and get these crystals and and all a, a lot of the materials and the and it wasn't a cauldron it was literally your house pot it wasn't an athame it was literally the one knife you had in the entire house that's why sometimes i mean in many practices around around uh, uh, the world scissors especially in folk magic scissors have multiple uses so it, it's it's important to know that yes this it's it's okay to modernize just know the history of that and i right. think Absolutely. that's one of the things i really really love to do in our podcast is kind of separate what's now what's history what history and folklore has informed the now that's my favorite part certainly witchcraft is wrapped up um to discuss like the the politics of witchcraft like we are unable to separate. Um, I, I have this idea of like a holistic approach of life in general, but like very much so influencing craft because again, you can't really separate them, right? Like at some point you don't get to take the pointy hat off anymore. Um, and the thing about that is, is that's all wrapped up in philosophy um, culture, body politics, class, religion, race, like all of these things are wrapped up together down to small things, food, uh, or the, well, that's not a small thing, right? Um, food, landscape, um, the place that you live on, and, and within the place that you live on, then the policies that inflict or are inflicted or do change um, on the place that you live on, right? So, witchcraft is inherently focused on the politicization of the area that you are in and if we if we take an idea of like witchcraft being of the earth or of the the natural world that we live in quote unquote natural world then we are subjugated to the laws rules enforcements policies and discussions surrounding those things um in which we live and, and in which we're enduring and occur so yeah there's no way to separate them I don't think and I think that as Marshall was saying a lot of the times when you hear like politicization you we just kind of immediately go to um like what's going on in Congress or or the White House if you live in America and and that's not I think the point we're talking about you know the entirety of the word, the holistic uh, uh, root word, uh, poly, police, policy, politics, um, and and to mean uh, you know the enforcement of such things that we we live and endure. Um, you know, one of the things um, I'm going to kind of slowly change the subject here. Yeah, <laughs> um, one of the things that I've been um, really paying attention to lately, and we actually had a whole show on it about a year ago, is that there's a lot of witches um, and, and magical people who are doing podcasts, especially Instagram, Instagram, whatever, because they want to, it, it feeds their, um, ego it feeds their their need to be I, our show isn't called witchcraft and the need to be famous and one of the things that i'm one of those people who like i'm a teacher i want to teach i i want to have the workshops i want to to share because if i share my your mind knowledge and then hopefully we can all grow and evolve and change and be hopefully better people um i was watching an instagram thing in this um which i guess um <laughs> has these beautiful videos of these flowers around the cauldron and they're so well done and gorgeous and the incense and flashes and the music she has and 
and she, she takes a ritual bath and it's great. And I'm just like, that's great. However, you spent literally $200 on flowers and you could do the exact same thing with a birthday candle, you know? Um, and so I guess my, my interlude here is how do you guys navigate the whole idea of, of get, giving information, sharing who you are, sharing the queer, sharing the magic without falling into that trap of ego, Instagram, um, things like that. Well, that's actually really good. That's a really good question. One of the first, the, while like you were saying- silence. Yes. <laughs> well, we well, do we? we I say? don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you mentioned there, the first thing that popped in mind was that same person who had that huge ritual bath to, with $200 worth of flowers. I'm like, that is going to clog your drain, sweetie. Thank you. That is going to clog <laughs> your drain. But when it comes to like, online influencers create a cult of personality that is absolutely right. true it is very it, and unfortunately like sometimes that can happen whether you necessarily mean it to or not right. um I, I will flat out admit that i think that has somewhat happened with me uh yeah. i really got into tiktok on during quarantine because i was home i i was really into showing off some of these cute little things and it seemed really popular at the time on there and i well, I love aesthetics. I love aesthetics. It's not always practical. So I started off with this concept of creating these really beautiful little TikToks. And the more and more and more I tried to curate these videos to be, um, you know, likable in the first place, the more I started realizing I don't really like to do this as much as I thought I did <laughs> because this isn't for me. This isn't even everything I'm doing is a demonstration. That's not even something that's real that I can use. Cause I am a big believer mm. that I don't like to heavily um, video or show a lot of spellcraft. I would much rather um, in a video, yes. I'd rather show a demonstration. I'd rather show a how to, I'd rather show um, uh, maybe a, an artsy way of putting something together. But once I have that's wasted herbs, you know, that's a wasted mm. little bottle now covered in wax. That's, um, I don't want to be wasteful. So I actually kind of got further and further away from that. And that's why you see mostly like brash statements on, on Twitter that I've now put a fun background to, and then <laughs> write a novel in the uh, uh, Instagram caption. And I got really into writing that way. So I think for me, one of the biggest things that helped was to take myself out of it. Like literally, if you look at my page, the majority of everything that I put out, I'm not in it. I only kind of post a picture of myself maybe every other week or so because um, I don't want to be the thing. I don't want to be the thing that becomes bigger than the thing that I love. And the thing that I love is witchcraft. And it's more important. It's more important than a cult of personality because that gets nowhere, honestly. Mm. Um, nowhere real. If, I, if that makes Ooh, sense. Ooh, I like what you said there. I think it can go good. places, but nowhere real. Mm -hmm. I think Marshall and I have done like really similar things in our social media, you know, present. I mean, God, we've been at this. I mean, you started your Instagram in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. You're, and I started mine in 2020. And I don't know, there was like a golden hour, I think, of like posting whatever you wanted and it like blowing up because mm -hmm. everyone was home and no one was doing anything. And now, almost three years later, um, I'm like, you know, I've talked about everything that I can talk about that's not personal, that's okay for Instagram that's not giving anything away um and I also have no interest in like sharing my personal practice beyond like mm. the things that I can and on top of that um I think what occurs a lot and and we see this this happens this has happened to me this has happened to everybody I know is that eventually at some point because you might seem well educated um and, and you might be certainly um people tend to look at you as a position of authority that you don't deserve to have and I say that coming as like 
somebody who has done like a workshop or two, you know, um, somebody who does sell, somebody who does put things out into the world, but like to call me a teacher, uh, a mentor or something like that, I think would be a severe um, misappropriation to the people who actually are teachers, who are leaders, who are educators, who have had like a certain amount of life experience um, and also experience in their craft. Like there are things that like, there are amazing teachers out there. And I think if any, if I could like make my point in five seconds, it would be like, listen to teachers and actually like finding good teachers or people who are genuine in their authority, not people who are seeking it only because, you know, they might not even have tried to get it for themselves, it might have just happened by way of having a high follower count or putting out content or being articulate in your words. Um, and I know speaking from experience, all of those things have happened to me. All of those things may have happened to Marshall. Um, and yeah, for me, it's not true. Like I'm not, I'm not that. I might be able to speak on what I know, but I wouldn't want to claim the authoritation or the authority of a teacher when I'm not that and I'm not ready to be that yet. So. Something I, I've been trying to um, share on my Instagram is is captions and links to reputable teachers because there's so many there's so many witchcraft courses right now and some oh that I think God. probably are made with good intentions but still come across kind of predatory like this whole if you sign up today it's fifty percent off but tomorrow it's going to be a thousand dollars for five weeks <laughs> you know and. And, you know, you shouldn't be pressured to to make a choice like that, you know, and and there's there's a lot of uh, reputable and uh, teachers who've, who've done the work and have good CVs. Um, but something I've struggled with because I recently switched from a mundane account to to the witchcraft theme account is a bit what you're talking about with I'm I'm not going to film work that's actually being done and work that's right. being done with deity because it you know it seems exploitive and shallow and so then I, so then i have to think like okay so then what am i gonna fill <laughs> you know you know part of the reason and i tell my students all the time audience out there i'm gonna tell you a secret if you take a picture of your altar of your spell uh, uh any competent witch or magician can actually you use that picture, tune into your spell, um, and you can work it against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I can ground it, I can change it, I can take your magic and make it my own simply because of a picture. So the reason if you go on my Instagram, and it's so funny, I get all these people, like I'll get 100 followers, and then they'll sit there for 100 uh, brand new followers and they'll sit there for like a week and then because i don't post spells which i don't i never do they all go away and that's fine um i will post things like here's my french fry <laughs> i'll post things like that or the only magical thing i'll do is i'll post the um fire that we built on the beach uh for a ceremony and i only do it before the ceremony and it's just fire, you know. So let the let people know if you take a picture of stuff and post it, any good magician can turn the spell against you. Just saying. So on a different note. <laughs> um, I am gonna be the voice of dissidents here. All right. I am I'm gonna disagree on one account. Okay. And I'm not dismissing anything that y'all say. I just want to add this. And if you do post, maybe you don't feel disempowered by prying eyes. Because if I were afraid, this is just me, okay? This is my very <laughs> personal opinion. I'm not afraid of people reaching through a screen and taking my magic. That's just me. 
I, I would agree with both of you in the instance that folklorically there's plenty of evidence to say that like while you're actively working on something and people know about what you're doing, there's an opportunity to thwart or vex um, or, or spoil that plan, right? Like the idea of um, a woman churning butter or somebody churning butter and then the witch down the road, you know, great grandma Bessie, uh, who is reported to be a witch and we don't really like her. We're very suspicious of her, um, you know, and suddenly your your butter isn't churning. Why won't your butter churn? And then, you know, you might have to take some of that butter and throw it in the fire, which is wasting milk and wasting cream. And then ultimately too, um, you know, putting up that protective that protective charm, you know, blessing your butter or blessing your cream before you start churning or getting like a proper or uh, like having the priest come over and um, bless the butter churn, right? Or putting up some, some yarrow or some rowan um, above your door or putting it in your mouth and chewing on it while you're singing to the butter, right? To prevent those witches from um, coming. And I'm saying that in a, in a folkloric sense, right? Um, so to agree with both of you, I think both of those things are, are right. I think it's better, in my opinion, it's better not to post work until it's been done, um, less opportunity. But also to your point, Laura, I I know what I'm doing. I, like I'm not worried about too many other people, but the less they know, the better. If I don't believe that I'm the most powerful witch doing this work, <laughs> then why do it, right? So that's, this is my personal belief. Now, I'm not gonna be on a Zoom call doing my chant and doing my thing with my herbs and this and that so that the whole world can see it. I, for example, very often, probably once a month, uh, take a photo of my altar where I had just put my candles for the first of the month. And I post that. And so there are levels, right? It's not like very much, it's not like disagreement, but there are levels. You're not going to broadcast everything and anything that you're doing step by step. Ergo, you're not going to waste the earth, the, the the glass, the wax, whatever. But at the same time, I don't believe that if I post a photo of my altar, it's going to be altered by prying and eyes. And in the other, other hand, I have to say, Austin, you just reminded me of this. This beautiful hair is not natural. Um, I had to get it done. And the lady that was at the salon, at the, at the beauty salon, not the lady who did it, but a lady that was there, she kept saying, oh my God, it's so beautiful. She got off her chair to come and see my blue hair and comment, to which I have to tell her, do me a favor, touch it. You need to touch it. Touch it so you don't put the evil eye on it. And she goes, uh -huh. oh, I don't think it's, uh, it's not my intention. I say, I know it's not your intention, but you're coming. That jealousy. Is being coveted, so just touch it, and and then and then look what happened. <laughs> Get all turned blue. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> there's a good um, there's a good segue there because Laura, you're um, mentioning posting your first of the month candles. Those are candles that that you do sell, and yes. uh, right. And I know I know both of you uh, have have work that you that you show us online because you you do work for you know you do um some of your art and craft for sale as well so um austin do you do you want to jump in and talk uh, and talk about your work as a perfumer and as a magical person Ooh. oh yes thank you um yeah so i'm a perfumer and you're, I, I'm, I'm sorry to jump back in but your okay. photos are amazing like the way you, you compose the photos and besides besides the perfumes themselves, like your artistic eye is incredible. Thank you. I um, had, I have a background, had a background. I took several, I was a terrible student, um, not because I wasn't good at the work, but because I didn't like to do it and I was lazy and I was a shitty teenager. Um, but I had multiple years of, of photography class and, and I've always pursued um, an artistic living to my downfall often, um, but not currently. So we're, we're good, um, different age. But 
Yes, I'm a perfumer. Um, I, I do a little bit of everything. I am very thankful of the background that I had growing up. Uh, my father is somebody who's very talented or like a very hands-on person. Um, I come from a long line of, of like handymen and welders and industrial folks um, and um, just very hardworking and very people who use their hands, um, not necessarily in, art, in an artistic way, um, but I also uh, have developed in, in an artistic sense. And I think that witchcraft um, or magic, I should say, is relies heavily on art and creation. Um, and so, yeah, uh, the shop that I, I run, I do perfumery. I build uh, spirit houses for um, the voices in my head, um, <laughs> the delusions of grandeur that I have. And uh, yeah, and I, I pedal them off my, my little wares and my, my fragrances and um, I hope people enjoy them. I feel like I'm, I sound very um, uh, dismissive of my work when I take it very seriously, but I find it uh, difficult sometimes to talk about it um, so masturbatorily, uh, if, you, if you don't mind my saying so, but I, I thank you for asking about it. Yeah, don't. I mean, you're 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 clearly a master. You're using talk techniques like enfleurage and you know things that things that most people don't know about. And yeah, it, it comes across. Thank you. I'm looking at your pictures on Instagram now, and I'm like, oh, these are so pretty. I really like your artistic eye. Thank you. Uh, Especially our... on the see a blood red candles. I love it. Thank, thank, All right. you. thank you. Marshall also has. Um, a really, really amazing artistic vision. And I'm really excited about the illustrations um, and the writing that Marshall's coming out with. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm I so thankful it. that I get to be not a part of this creative process, but I'm able to like peer into it and um, see what's going on in your head. Like, I, I truly believe that the purpose of going back to my point about witchcraft not being being inseparable from like art culture philosophy religion race gender politics etc ultimately like i don't think that like i think that we are bigger or there are things much bigger than that than us and simultaneously like we are very small and very big at the same time. And I think that art and and writing and um, all of these things are interconnected. They're all spirit led. Everything is is very like intermingled between us and ourselves. And I think Marshall, you're writing. I think that many of these stories that you're developing, this art that you're developing is simultaneously from you, but also bigger than you at the same time. And I, I'm really excited for it to come out. That, that, the way you just said that last part right there, that it, it, it very much feels like it is something from me that is so much bigger than me because, um, I mean, I'll go and spill a couple secrets. It's it's getting close to the book release in spring. So I don't mind sharing a few secrets here. I got to let little bits out whenever I can, you know? Um, one of my, I mean, well, I love doing art and I love drawing. I've gotten super, super into Procreate. Oh my gosh. It has changed my life with being able to create digital art. But writing has been something that I think I have been holding inside of me for so long. I see works of art and I want to know why is she standing there? What's she holding? Who's that guy? Where do they come from? I wonder if they have accents. Like all of these things come to me when I see pieces of art, when I see, honestly, when I see people too, but art really inspires me and I want to give everything a story. And if I don't know it, I'm going to give that story. I'm going to make up that story. And I remember I used to even play this game with a friend of mine. We would go to the pool and like a public pool and we would literally look at be like, you think they're together? Or do you think they're just friends? Like we would literally make up- One of my favorite up, games. It's my favorite games. Yeah. We make up these ideas about them. And the more I would write these stories and this is a great opportunity to talk about a little bit of how magic and mundane are inseparable in my life because I actually do the majority of my writing on the elliptical. Um, I, I do it on my phone on the elliptical because I get into this extremely 
I want to say almost like a meditative trance state where I start writing the subject and I'm in this repetitive motion and it's on my phone. So I'm not really getting dizzy or anything, but it's, it's, it's so easy for me in this repetitive motion to completely leave the space that I'm in and get lost in this story that I'm writing. Mm. And sometimes it'll be 30 minutes to an hour. And I'm just like, I still got more to go. Why is my elliptical slowing down? And, and I do feel very much like the stories within my book that are going to come out. Um, they feel inspired. They feel channeled. Um, they feel like there's a concept in, in chaos magic with egregores and servitors where mm -hmm. you're not necessarily conjuring up very specific existing spirits. You're creating them. And that is very much what I believe my book is doing. It is taking inspiration and ideas from things that have really, really fired off synapses in my brain and it's given them life it's given them color and background and texture and and joys and sadness um there is a lot of of ups and downs in these stories but those ups and downs inform the witchcraft that is very clearly written within it for for the reader to to digest and bring into their own craft if if they feel inspired by these stories that's awesome oh my god i'm so inspired um your book comes out in spring you said Is that's that right? my goal my goal I, i'm self-publishing okay um, yeah I, i'm self-publishing so it will be available in an ebook and and paperback and hardcover I'm oh my gosh let us know let us know i want it i'm like i want it right now right now <laughs> hey all uh, right we have come yeah. we have come to the end of our show my god this this was like the fastest show ever i was just like it's eight o'clock. Are you kidding me right now? We just got started. We still got lots to talk about. So, so I'm going to ask you now in front of uh, Goddess and, and, and everyone, will you come back for a part two? This was awesome. <laughs> I absolutely would. This was fun. Yeah, absolutely. This fun. This absolutely fun. For sure. I might have to schedule like an hour and a half with you guys or something, because this is like well, plus it's a panel, so we all have lots to say. So, you oh know. yeah, let's do a part uh, two. It sounds great. Let's do part two. two. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have to go. Um, I'm so sad. I want to cry. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, you guys are fabulous. Um, tell us the name of your podcast one more time. Uh, it's uh, Southern Bramble, a podcast of Crooked Way. Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's do this correctly. I, I was like, oh, that's her podcast. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Our podcast is Southern Bramble, a podcast of Southern. Wait, no. Oh my gosh, I just messed it up. You're listening to Southern Bramble, a podcast of Crooked Ways. That's it. If I say it any other way, it all comes out jumbled. We always, yeah, we always finish with that, and then our 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 themes and our notes and things like that so i uh thank you to everybody for having us again uh much 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 adoration um and and thank you for for um letting us speak like i always joke that i put the the ramble in bramble <laughs> and i actually had this amazing friend of mine like draw an image of me and that that literally says putting the ramble in Baynex Bramble and I, I can't wait to frame it. Uh, it's That's so awesome. funny to me, but yes, I, I do talk a lot. So maybe an hour and a half would be <laughs> uh, better, but thank you everybody. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Aaron, did you have any last, last words? What are your last words? Um, yeah, storybook podcast. the the first The first teaser, which is a story time, comes out on Monday. Awesome, Laura. Last words. Dun dun dun. On Monday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, my parting words is: please sign up to my classes. <laughs> I, I, I really You're so silly. I have people sign up for my classes. No, but for real. Uh, and. Uh, more importantly, what I want to say is hip witchcraft political because it affects everything and it affects everyone. The systems of oppression are held by those who are oppressed by the weight of the system. Get off the freaking wheel. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. 
I want to plug. I want to do a plug. Everyone got to do a plug. I want to do one. So my new um, book comes out. So is it's strange. We're going to have a special edition hardcover that comes out in February, but it's in the and the Amazon soft uh, what comes out in April. But it's called it's, it's called the Black Book of Jonathan, uh, not Bristle, the Charmer, a Devil's a parable and speaking of storytelling it was um 90 percent channel um by some uh, which uh, uh spirits i work with personally and it's the story of a 15 year old in 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 texas 1870 who loses his family and the devil comes and get me and gives him the power of witchcraft and each each uh, chapter teaches you or i should say you're along the journey of jonathan's um a path into witchcraft well witchcraft and the him focal floor and it's told from his point of view because i channeled it so th th that comes out in february so i'm so excited yeah the black that book is of Jen that is so exciting. I, you know, I, I think know, I saw, I'm entranced. I'm really entranced. That's why you're publishing with Cross Crow Books. Is that correct? I look at you paying attention. Yes. I, yes. I was going to ask. I thought, yes, I thought the same thing. That's really wonderful. And I Cross can hook Crow you is guys stunning. Up. Let me hook you up. I'll hook you up with those guys. Well, I will be buying a, I will be buying a copy yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, that sounds magnificent. I'm the same for your, your, your guys material and stuff. if i can hook you up they're always trying to find authors so thank you i might you. do that next time <laughs> yeah. we're talking about the guys from cross crow books uh blake malloway is going to be on lunatic mondays on oh january 23rd Ooh, so this that's is lunatic mondays on january 30 23rd okay uh we're gonna i'll be tune in blake. yep Awesome. All right. We're over time. We got to go. Okay. Chris, <laughs> thank you Aaron, so much, guys. Laura, I everybody. You. Thank you. Yes. Thank all right. you all very much. Everyone have a good night. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye. 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 Bye, Nero. Bye.